today's lockout tagout webinar. Just a couple of housekeeping items first. Everyone in the, in the audience is muted. We will have a brief question and answer session at the end of the webinar. And at that time, I'll ask you to use the raise your hand feature on your webinar panel, and I will call your name and open up your line. So this is going to be a very fast-paced webinar focusing on the capabilities of TRM's Lockout Tagout Manager. Our presenter today is William Wood, one of TRM's senior business consultants and software developers. William has over 20 years' experience in the energy and utility industry and has been with TRM since, t since 2005. William is also the creator of our two safety clearance applications safety tagging system and lockout tagout manager. Safety tagging system is a standalone application and does not require Maximo. Lockout tagout manager, on the other hand, was created using rules manager as its engine, so it seamlessly integrates with Maximo. This means that your upgrades with lockout tagout manager are easy and we offer a very high level of configurability. You'll leave this webinar with the sense of power and control that TRM's lockout tagout application can bring to your organization and a really good understanding of the differences between this solution and Maximo out of the box. And with that, I will go ahead and turn over to William and make him presenter. Bear with me, William. Uh, I'm here. And you should have control. I have control. And can you see my screen list? Yes. Okay, great. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is William Wood. I'm with Total Resource Management, and I'm going to be going over the basic functionality of the TRM Lockout Tagout Manager product. This product is a um, is a, an add-on to the uh, the Maximo product. We are actually a collection of custom applications in uh, the Maximo Maximo architecture. And we use the TRM Rules Manager product to do the to implement the business uh, rules for uh, lockout tagout. So all of this is done without extending any of the uh, Java classes um, in, within the application. So to start with, the first module I'm going to talk about is the lockout tagout uh, standards module. This particular module allows users to uh, to pre-build different lockout tagouts for different pieces of equipment. This meets the lockout tagout uh, requirement that uh, uh, if it's anything as complicated, it should have a pre-written procedure, which is part of, of OSHA's requirements there. So this allows for um, certain people with uh, in the right security groups in Maximo to be able to build and create these uh, and modify these individual uh, standards or templates. Okay, these uh, um, this application is designed to utilize the uh, Maximo location and the uh, asset hierarchies. However, it's not required to do. Uh, you don't have to write a lockout tagout against an individual location or asset. You can just write it against a a um, a stringed value. And that we do that because uh, we have a lot of clients that uh, are using other types of software for their lockout tagouts and they want to migrate their data into Maximo, but they, when they built their original lockout tagouts uh, in whatever software they were using, they did not use the Maximo location and asset hierarchy information. That same um, uh, thought is in process. We can uh, actually use the um, information for the location hierarchy or the asset hierarchy on the individual steps themselves, or they can um, just be text-based. So for example, this first step here says that the condensate return pump is that the first action is we're just going to verify that it's not running. And the second one is actually that they're going to open and rack out a breaker. So this uh, flexibility allows you to use the location and asset hierarchy or not use them. Not everything that uh, requires a lock and a tag is actually going to have, um, well, might not have a location or an asset hierarchy record. I know that in some of our clients, um, you know, we, they do go down and get vent and drain valves 
um, and they're part of the hierarchy. In other uh, facilities that that um, our software is in, they only go down to maybe you know to a one inch pipe or something like that, and then everything below that is basically a throwaway item. So that equipment doesn't show up in the hierarchies, but we still have to hang locks and tags on it. So the software supports just using the you know a text based uh, entry as to what that piece of equipment might be that you're going to hang a tag on. Uh, this particular instance that we're looking at here actually allows um, the ability to have both apply steps and or um, remove steps. Not all of our clients um, are set up this way where they, they uh, have a, a different set of steps for uh, the apply and remove. The software is flexible in that we, you can put all of your apply and remove steps in one of these tabs and the other tab would be hidden out of view, and in which case all of your your steps would be in one, you know, in, to uh, hang the tags you would go in one order and then to remove the tags we have a lot of clients that just basically go in a reverse order to, to remove that. So the product is very, very flexible as far as that type of, uh, you know, the matching your particular process to what the, our application actually does. Um, just looking at the different uh, nomenclature and the different fields on the screen here, this is just one example of what the lockout tagout application can can be like. The um, uh, this are like I said, custom applications over custom tables in in Maximo. So if there are additional fields or if there's different nomenclature, it's very easy to uh, quickly configure this to meet you know what your specific needs are. Now the next application that I want to talk about is the is really the the meat of what the, our lockout tagout is, and this is the, the the tracking application. So if I needed a a lockout tagout, I can create a new one, and here I can use a standard to um, uh, copy the information from one of those pre-written procedures. So when I click Save, this goes out, grabs a copy of that information, brings those steps across, both the apply and the remove. Now here, I can either add steps or modify steps as to you know basic you know to actually um, uh, protect the users against what the scope of the work is actually going to be. So this is a good starting point. Any changes made to this are um, not reflected back on the standards. The standards stay what those were. So the so from here, you know, we can create this. This is a um, a statusable object, so we can change the status of this. So uh, in this particular case, there uh, the, this version that we're actually looking at here. Um, let's see, let's populate this. Their first uh, status is a request. Their second status is that they are. Uh, the uh, order to apply has been issued. So at this point in time, they would print out their forms and tags, take them into the field, and they would um, hang their tags. They would you know, manipulate the equipment, hang their tags. Then they would uh, return to, um, you know, to a computer, and they would mark that the, the next status is going to be um, that they have applied this. And that means that now the you know the the tags are hanging and it's safe for people to go to work. So whatever those those pro, those steps are, whatever your statuses are, that's what we configure into the into the software. This is just like I said, one example of what this uh, what this can be like. And we can do uh, additional um, you know we have the additional functionality to to implement uh, based on you know we have some clients that use. Um, testing uh, when there's a lockout tag out in the field. They might need to lift one um, tag and then shut a breaker. Maybe uh, if you're replacing a, a, a motor and you want to bump it for rotation or something like that. Some uh, people's um, uh, procedures allow that uh, type of functionality. And so we, we can do that as well as uh, uh, we have clients that um, their procedures allow them to do modifications to existing lockout tagouts. They can, um, you know, they get into a system and find out that something is leaking by. They can add a new tag to the to that lockout tagout. So we can track all of those types of functionalities 
right within the software. We've we've probably not seen anything, or you probably can't ask us to do something that we probably have not seen either in Lockout Tagout Manager or in our other product, the safety tagging software. So this um, uh, this process here allows. Um, there's some tabs up here. We can actually put. Um, uh, we have tabs that allow for clients to let their um, the individual workmen um, sign on to the lockout tagout. So that you, you know, until they've released it, um, and, you know, by signing off, they uh, you can't change the status to um, you know, so, so so you can print the paperwork to go pick up the lock blocks and tags, so it won't let you change the status until everyone's been signed off. We can track it that way. In this particular case, there's a, also a, a, here a work permits um, tab, and this is a function for this particular client, and as someone signs on, they actually get a, a permit to work you know, that, that they can carry around and they have to bring back and, and turn in and sign off. So the product is very flexible as far as trying to meet your individual needs for what your processes are. Part of the history of, of us, uh, TRM and Lockout Tagout, is that when we first started doing this, we found that there was a lot of different ways that the OSHA uh, requirements were interpreted, and not all, they weren't all wrong. They were just different as they were implemented. So we've always strived to have a, um, a software that is highly configurable so that we can um, have it set up to meet your needs and you know not necessarily for you to do it the way that we say that you're supposed to do it. Now one of the things that um, that we uh, that I want to talk about is also has to do with how our product is different than the out of the box Maximo product. For the uh, most part, um, our product is is more robust. It has a lot more func functionality, a lot more flexibility than the out of the box software, which could be configured if if you wanted to go about doing it to have some uh, additional functionality that does does not exist right out of the box. But you always have to start with a, a work order when you start with with um, the out of the box lockout tagout. And one of the places where we've done an extensive amount of work is in the utility space. And they often start lockout tagouts before the work permits or, or the work orders are ready. And often you might have one lockout tagout. Maybe you're taking out a boiler, and you're going to do 300 work orders against that thing during the outage. So um, our software allows the you know the lockout tagout to stand on its own, and you can um, you can be uh, related to a work order, and you could have multiple work orders um, underneath. You know that particular lockout tagout, but you don't. You don't have to. You know, it's not a one-for-one one relationship. That's one of the biggest things is is that we're really designed for places that do a lot of lockout tagouts in an individual year. Some of our plants might do 10,000 lock lockout tagouts in an individual year. So you know, we're a really robust, really meant for uh, you know uh, facilities that do a lot of locking and tagging. And I think that's it, Liz. I think we can open it up for some questions. That's great. Thanks, William. So once again, everyone, if you use the raise your hand feature on your panel, I will open up your line. Um, so I'm going to do a quick scroll down and look for questions. And William, I do not see any hands up. Let me just go up and down one more time. I think you covered everything nicely. Um, so we're going to end this webinar, but I want everyone to know that we will be sending out a link to the recording. We'll also include a link to our YouTube channel once it's posted there. Sometimes it's easier to reach um, the video through that mechanism versus go to meeting. And if, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to me, and I'll put you in touch with the right person here at TRM. And we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. Thanks, William. Thanks, everyone.